I'm sat here today and it is looking a bit grim outside. Winter in the Northern Hemisphere is coming, Jacko. So we need to make a plan for training outdoors. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. Now you know that we are big advocates of training outside and one of the greatest things about calisthenics is, is the freedom to basically train wherever you want and in my kind of preference is to train in some of the more enjoyable locations around the world whether that be at the beach in the in the forest it's starting to sound weird but you get what i mean <laughs> but i'm sat here today and it is looking a bit grim outside winter in the northern hemisphere is coming jacko so we need to make a plan for training outdoors well, not training outdoors, training indoors when outdoors is less preferable. Yeah, a, 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 a wet weather plan, we would like to call it. And it's <laughs> exactly. probably like at school. Looking at, uh, there'll be some people listening to the podcast, obviously from all over the world, and you're just like basking in glorious sunshine in Australia or whatever. And it's like, this is basically like us going, screw you all, we're jealous of you, not screw you, you know what I mean, we're jealous of you. Um, and yes, the reality is for many, many people now, uh, particularly those, as Tim said, in the normal hemisphere, we are going to have to train inside and that might disrupt things um, and we want to look at um, giving you some help some tips and some advice as to carrying on getting the most out of your training during those cold winter months where we might not be outside uh, one of the options Tim might be strap a pair on sunshine and uh, <laughs> and get outside and, and train in the training the cold but um, yeah the reality of making sure that rather than it being like a merry Jacko Christmas where you put, put on the poundage over Christmas and then you, you feel a bit rubbish when you come back into January. Can we be effective with our training and still enjoy it, even though our environment is probably going to change? So, um, I'm going to pick up on your first point because it is part of the sort of narrative in my mind of going, should I just strap a pair on and get outside throughout the winter, come rain or shine, get the train done? This is the lifestyle and the attitude that you've committed to, Tim. Stop kind of steering away from it when it gets a little bit unpleasant is there something in my mindset that i need to shift around that or is it that you've got a house and you've got some kit inside so why are you training outdoors when it's cold and wet what do you yeah. think about that um yes there's a potential to combine some sort of um not necessarily resilience cold, training cold hardship. water therapy but just like cold the cold therapy to get mm. just to get used to it um how there is some you know, uh, I'll, I'll potentially throw this back to you from a from a sports science perspective of like the how good an idea is it to train when you are completely cold in terms of like tissue temperature, like how how that is going to affect what you're doing and, and therefore you're going to benefit from being inside. The other thing I thought of as well was the fact that some people who've listened to this and going, um, don't know what you pair are like. Uh, I've got a gym membership still, so uh, I'm absolutely <laughs> yeah. absolutely fine. I'm probably going to go in the sauna afterwards as well. Thanks very much. Well, I know people that maintain their gym memberships that do calisthenics purely just for the winter periods. Owen's a bit like this. Like he'll have a, he'll have a gym membership because he wants to train indoors in the winter, which kind yeah. of makes sense. I've got a thing about this is kind or of... Or you a, train a at a CrossFit box and there's no heating. And, yeah, freezing and they're freezing anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, so yeah, it's like, like, like standard. I either, these things, yeah. um, I'm actually in a bit of a thing at the moment, to be honest, and thinking about... This is kind of a bit of a side point, but thinking about what my home gym setup like, it looks like because... I'm, I had thought about going back to the gym recently just to change the environment. We've spent a lot of time at home in the last 18 months and just to kind of go and surround myself with some people who are training whilst I'm training and, and just see how that goes. But having a browse around, I'm really struggling to find a gym that is in a acceptable distance from my house that I really want to go and train in that I'm going to see as a inspiring and motivational environment. So I've kind of gone full circle and gone, well, I don't want to get in the car for half an hour to drive. And people might go, it's only half an hour, Tim, but it's not because it's an hour of travel plus an hour in the gym and whatever else you might do when you spend there. That takes up a significant amount of time out of my day. So I'm kind of at the moment going through this this narrative of all of this conversation myself of, yes, it is a bit difficult to train at home and to break from a workspace into a training space um, and be in the same four walls the whole time. But... I just actually need to have a word with myself and get it done. So that's kind of, I guess yeah. the point of that is a kind of, I'm just having to redo some work on myself in terms of my overall attitude to training at home. And that's harder because it's very easy in the summer to kind of go, oh, I'm going to set the rig up in the garden and go and train in the sunshine. That's kind of feels real yeah. nice. Whereas now it's sort of like, I do want something different for my training going into the winter, 
but I need to actually, because I can't find a solution to that in terms of going to a gym and need to do some work in, in the house. And I've just got to make a mindset shift about that. And it's actually like, that's the thing of just, just get it done. Like find, and, and in the, I'm probably going to change my home training environment a little bit just to kind of freshen things up a little bit. Um, but it is an interesting thing about how do we kind of keep things fresh at home, particularly when we can't train outdoors. Um, and, and I think a lot of people listen to this, they've got home gyms in their garage or whatever they do calisthenics at home already, but they've got a designated training space. So I guess the, the other conversation to throw into this is around what's it like when it's kind of dark first thing in the morning until maybe nine o'clock in the worst of winter, it gets dark again at four o'clock. It's, I, it is more difficult to get out of bed and train in the dark and cold. I, I did a full block of that last winter. Um, and it's not, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. You kind of start to relish the fact that you are up at five o'clock and for some, you get a bike, you kind of, you get up in the morning at five o'clock in training and you kind of give yourself a badge of honor. For doing <laughs> that. There's like a, there's a deep internal sense of reward that you need to tell everybody about because that's what we do. There's, there's loads in there. Sorry. Yeah. Download. That is like, cause no one else is training this time. Um, I think to go, um, to pick up, pick up on a couple of things that will be and, and try to make this uh, some practical advice and some ideas to people. The pick up on one point you made of like, if we can, are we able to carve out a different space um, to dedicate to that? And this doesn't to, to the to the train. This doesn't mean that you have to like build a home gym and like build an extra layer on your garage or anything like that. Like the idea of just having different parts the, the same way where like it's not good for you to sort of like do work where you sleep because like you want the brain to associate those different things and it's like if you can can you um create a different environment for when you're training compared if you're working from home to, to, to in, like physically where it is and if that's not even the case can you just move some stuff around to make it just like feel or seem and make a different like a definite like change of like okay this is now like training time um and that might be that like part of that might be what, what equipment you've got you get out and it's not normally on display you know you hide it away somewhere and then it, so you, you've got this like physical change of the environment which will help mentally with okay this is what this is what we're doing now and give the brain the chance to associate like okay this is a different like task we're doing i'm not working we're we're doing some training yeah there's a really good point you make on that because I know coaches and I've, I've been there in the past when I was doing a lot of face-to-face -face coaching, stand-up hours in the gym, switching from going in a coaching environment to the, to the, the squad or the athlete leaving to then like changing my t-shirt and trying to train in, this, train in the same environment. It's actually quite hard. Mm. Like I know some people who are literally who work in a gym will go and train in a different gym because it's just a different, yeah, yeah. It's a different that environment. Different association. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and then probably one of the big things I want to uh, pick up on for people um is to go like there's, there's there's sort of like twofold or two things going on there's like what can you do inside compared to what you were doing if you was training outside so you might have been like going to the park to train but you don't really want to do that when it's like snowing or freezing weather or maybe you choose to do that but you put plenty of layers on whatever but like if my my example would be i will do a lot of my training like in my garden like i love being on the grass but that's when it's nice and at least dry. Like if it's raining, like I'm not going to be rolling around or doing my handstands like in the, on the wet grass, but I might occasionally, but you know, generally not. And then what does that, what does it that will, of course, Jacko, be the, this, the annual in your, um, lying in the snow in your pants photo. Of course, <laughs> yeah, that'll be that'll, standard. That'll, that's recovery. That's what <laughs> um, Like having, having like bars set up outside, like haven't got that inside. Um, so there's some differences of like what I'm going to be able to do. Uh, so like I'm not going to be doing um, muscle ups, for example, inside when it's raining or terrible outside. Like, that's just not something that my training is going to be. So if and then if I still have a desire to work on this, how can I what am I doing in my training to still manage the sort of like um, the, the basic bare bones fundamental elements of that like am i still getting some pull-ups and some dipping work done at some relatively decent strength levels and i can shift my focus from uh, potentially like so my example for me would be when in the winter being less specific and work on more sort of general base stuff and build up that bigger base is going to be easier for me to facilitate doing with the space and the equipment that that i've got um the other one that's really interesting with like with handstands is taking your handstand into a different environment. So I've always found having stuff close to me, 
like off-putting when I'm do, trying to do handstand work. Also, like the what your feet, your hands on the floor, like being on carpet or on wooden floor, depending on what your floor is, you might, you might not be used to it. It might be a bit strange at first, but that variety, that variation can can help with a little bit of that, like learning process or robustness for a handstand that we've talked. We talk about that in great detail in the handstand course that we've got. Um, but challenging my handstand in terms of like doing it in some ro different rooms in my house would be one example that would be like really off-putting for me to actually try and do. Um, so that's then using my training environment that's actually would be annoying if I look at it that way, like, oh, that stops me from doing what I'm good at normally, to actually, as long as I do it safely, but to go and like use it in a way to, to actually like improve um, my training as well. So that's, that's a couple of things that hopefully give people a bit of insight and some, um, some ideas mm. of going like match up what you have got available to what you're going to set your intentions for your training for that winter block rather than just being like, oh, I can't do my human flag because I ain't got any human where to do my human flag in, inside. Like that's not actually going to help you be effective with what your training is going to be during that winter block. Yeah, I think the point you make around doing basics is really is really yeah. important. Like that's what I did last year. Um, a, a full block during the winter months, like December, January, February, when it's kind of the, the peak of winter in the UK. Um, and I just set myself a program, and a number of people have asked about this actually, of, of just going, like, how do you find that consistency within that kind of just that particular strength orientated block? And I just wrote out a session. I was training like five days a week probably. And I had everything listed out, but it wasn't complicated. It was basics. I had three main exercises to do each day. It was a, a push pull and a lower body exercise of some variety. And I just kind of scaled the volume. So I wasn't trying to get through a huge amount of different variations of movement. And I was getting up at like five, I think training at five thirty, six o'clock, something like that. But I just, I just had that all written out. So every morning I got up and I was like, this is what I've got to do today. Yeah. And it might've been pull-ups, dips, and some like Nordics or something like that, or, or a single leg squat variation, something, something progressive around that. And then when you get, when you're doing that, when it is a bit dark and you're a bit sleepy, having to coming down and just going, I haven't really got to think about yeah. anything. I'm just going to like, I can stay in a sort of like a little bit of slumber zone and just kind of get this stuff done, put some music on and, and whatever. And I really enjoyed that time, but the consistency and not having the, the, the pressure of kind of come up with a workout on the, on the spot was really useful yeah. um, and you, you're right that build taking that opportunity where training at home and it's a bit dark and, and whatever just to do the grunt work the basic strength yeah. progressive overload stuff which is going to set you up for what you want to do when we can get back outside and i don't this is probably like i don't want this to sound like a doom and gloom of sort of training at home and a, and a negative side or, or almost even just go in like the somewhat listen to this and just going to suck it up lads like it's just <laughs> training but let's just kind of also appreciate that kind of pressure through life ebb and flow and we've been at home a lot over the last 18 months and um the, the summer last year in 2020 and then also this year is just a breath like it is definitely that kind of it brings and lightens the mood we all know that um in my house we are sunshine enjoying people Cora in south africa and she hates the winter um and we generally struggle when it is dark we, we would get, be much get happier the red light in, in get the red clouds. light on yeah no, exactly boys, red light in the morning sse five for five percent off your red light right <laughs> um so yeah i just think it's like being kind to yourself during those phases and and if you are and this is the thing like somebody who's going to a gym where you go to a class at five o'clock in or six o'clock in the morning and you've got 10 other people's energy to feed off then that's a very very different situation and scenario to getting up and then going downstairs or into your garage to try and grind out a session by yourself. And, and I'm actually sort of reflecting on this at the moment and going, what does that say about you? Like, what are you, what are you, and this is kind of a, to, to my point before about the conversation I'm having with myself is like, do you really want this? Like, is this something you really want to do in, in terms of the training and what, and what you're kind of working towards? Because it's very easy to sort of, when you haven't got a group of people or a community or a training partner or something to kind of just, oh, it just, but can you find that internal motivation within yourself to actually push yourself to do the training? Um, and, and this is like after years and years and years of, of being in this kind of, of, of training to still find that by yourself, self-motivated, self-driven. I actually think there's a little bit of a, um, a diamond crusted in there that I have, haven't yet really kind of uncovered for myself. How do you find intensity when it is just you by yourself, can you, can you go to that place 
and do the hard work. I think it's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting because it's like when you've like I know for and there must be there must be plenty of like someone must have done some decent research on this that like when you train as a in a group and you're encouraging each other like you push yourself harder there's like there's no doubt that like when if I think back to playing rugby and training the gym with a load of other rugby lads like you it's a, and to some degree probably to some detriment at times because your ego is flying and you try but mm. you know you're gonna do um oh here, here's a good story for you Loughborough University power-based gym where the um where where the where kings of uh, strength are made um I wasn't so I was like blissfully weak when I went to, like when I was 18 I couldn't like I could barely bench press the bar like with no weight on anyway <laughs> I um there was a, there was um some athletes doing like testing and they, uh, kind of, I remember a load of people which like start just crowding around the bench press, and everyone's like, going, "What's going on?" And they 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 done them in pairs, and they <laughs> they set themselves the, the the whoever lost and did the least amount or, or closest furthest away from their PB or whatever had to. And this was like two pairs of two lads. They had to kiss in front of everybody. Oh, no. And everybody, and literally the whole gym is going around going, Everyone PB. He's lowering the bar down. He's like, Aah! And everyone's just going, <laughs> yeah, kiss him. And like, yeah, everyone PBs massively. Like, just shows you, like, what's what sort of, like, the cycle of what's going on and all that sort of stuff. And, like, the, you know, the absolute opposite of that is, like, getting up or whatever it is that you're going to train, look at it's miserable outside, ugh, and you're just like, you're just like, well, I'm a, what, what am I going to do today? And, you know, it, say you haven't planned out what you're going to do. You're not following one of the online programs in the virtual classrooms. You haven't got it all laid out for you. You know, that's something you might want to consider. But you go, you haven't planned it out, and you're like, what am I going to do today? And then just, like, feel – and that, all that sort of um, – yeah, like you say, like, what's – it's an interesting one because you go, you go, do you go and find a way to be part of something and just take that out of the equation? Or do you embrace it and go, right – I know that when I'm with others and with groups, like I get a lot out of that. But I also want the ability that when it's just me, just on my own, like can I still bring it at that point? Mm. And, and using that as a potential, that's a nice little challenge, um, challenge over winter. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, that, that, go on. No, go on. You go. I just, was just my, one like one sort of like final thing for me on this as a a bit of a practical thing for people um, that that you mentioned or just touching on going those basics but match up with rather than like putting your say if you've got some specific goals in mind maybe it's a, a strength-based goal maybe it's a movement or mobility based goal you go um rather than just like thinking like oh, i'm just not going to like touch on that at all well whereas go what are the basic fundamental movement and strength to so take the framework from school class what well the basic movement and strength components or elements of the goal i'm trying to achieve What's the like foundation and basics of those? And then make sure that they're being hit in your training, knowing that even though I'm doing these like more basic things that are easier for me to facilitate in my home environment, what is that doing? Knowing that that's doing something for those longer term goals. And, uh, you know, one thing that's really simple for people would be like all the movement stuff. We've just, uh, as this goes out, we're, we've done maybe one or two weeks of a six week mobility online program. So there'll be another one, like you can't sign up to it now, but there'll be, there'll be more than, um, in the future, but everything in there doesn't need any equipment at all. Just needs you and your body. And like, how many people know that a they need to move better, be more mobile, be more flexible, have better mobility through the body, but also know that like it's actually a restriction of my shoulder, my spine, and my hip that's stopping me from achieving some of the strength goals that I want because I'm just too tight to get in some of these good positions. But, you know, my shoulders and spine is affecting my hamstring or whatever it is. And so, you know that's a great opportunity when you haven't got, if you haven't got any equipment, you haven't got like a lot of space, like you can do all of this in the fucking shoe box pretty mm. much. Um, so, so some encouragement for me to think about what are, what are those goals I'm going to, am I working towards? Find out the basics, get those nailed. And then where are the movement restrictions that you've got and use some of the simple movement ability stuff that we've got for you inside the virtual classroom to be able to work on those quite comfortably on your own at home and it's a different type think, of challenge and intensity in that it's not like a bring it challenge it, it could be that like they're on the days that you're just not really up for like going really hard at something it's like right 
let's let's start greasing some of these joints and let's start mm. ticking off some of those boxes. Yeah, one well, one thing I know about when training is well, when your training mojo is a little bit sort of depleted, is that you've got to you've got to you've got to program the sessions that you want to do. So we, we're always big fans of kind of going. You've got to often do the work that you don't really want to do because that's probably where your weaknesses are. Mm. But trying to do that where generally like things are more difficult or you're finding your motivation to train maybe a little bit compromised. Like, so for me, the winter will be a hypertrophy block. I'm just going to go and train volume in basic push pull patterns, lower body stuff, and just crank out, but I'm going to spice it up with things like drop sets and supersetting things. I mean, there's nothing complicated about superset, but the drop sets are fun. I love cluster training. High intensity mm. cluster training is probably one of my favorite ways to train. So you're going to pick a, eight repetition max, for example, and I'm going to go and do a five, a three, um, and then a one or something like that. So I'm actually getting nine repetitions at eight rep max. That, that for me is a hugely potent stimulus, but it just mixes things mm. up a little bit. But when I'm not feeling great, what am I going to value? So, and this is just a reflection on myself. This would be, it might be for, for somebody else, as Jackie mentioned, it, it's mobility. It could be like just putting a really big metabolic engine in. So you're going to go out and run or you're going to get on a bike or whatever. But for me, like I'm going to, uh, during the winter, one of the things that I know motivate me is like feeling good in myself, feeling good in my own skin and looking in the mirror going like, okay, even though it's Christmas and winter where we tend to kind of hunker down and we don't move quite as much because we're not outdoors and like, I'm still going to feel pretty good about myself. And that will be my motivation to get the sessions done um, and the consistency within that. And and to, to your point, I'm going to loop this all the way back to the beginning, Jackie, when you mentioned about the sports science side of being training outdoors and, and being cold. Yeah, if we, obviously we're going to have to do appropriate warm-ups, but I have seen nfl games in the snow and i have played rugby in the snow and it is the worst <laughs> worst thing as a winger there. there's two things about as a winger, i don't want to do i don't want to be hit by some big bloke and i don't want to like be in the absolute freezing cold standing out on the wing not getting the ball Gosh, I remember days in West Yorkshire when I was at university and we rocked up on a Saturday morning, probably with a hangover and it had snowed and I was stood by the referee going, that pitch looks unplayable, sir. <laughs> it's not. There's about, there's about probably two centimetres of snow, but I'm like, I'm a winger. I'm not very big. I'm not carrying a lot of body fat. No one's going to pass me the ball today. I'm literally going to be here for 80 minutes. At some point, I'm going to have to tackle somebody, which means I'm going to have to roll around on the floor, get soaking wet and then stand around for a bit longer. Um, so you can do it. Like you can train in the snow, providing you're appropriately warmed up. But what I know is going to be the most potent thing for your training is to, what is the session that you're actually going to do? Mm -hmm. So you, I could sit here inside now going, do you know what? I'm going to test myself. I'm definitely going to train when it's cold. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to put my hand on the bar. It's going to be freezing and my hands are going to get cold. I'm going to flip and love that. It's going to be brilliant. No, it won't. There'll be there will definitely be times where I don't want to do that session and I don't do it. So how do I structure training to to be something that I really want to do? And then within that, when we kind of got the habit of training, maybe then we can kind of slot in a couple of things that are maybe a little bit less enticing. So whatever that is for you, yeah. kind of fill in the blank of whatever you don't want to do, but you know you need to in preparation for what you're trying to work towards. Yeah. No, perfect. Love it. Um wanting to uh wrap things up timbo with uh, uh one thing I, I sort of said it it was like jokingly but it's actually a genuine thing like during the winter the red light comes massively mm. into play when you're struggling Hours on this morning for half an hour breakfast the whole house baby i've got a six-month-old baby she loves it She's <laughs> i don't know if it's good for her eyes or not but she likes it <laughs> there is she comes from blind. The rhythm, it mimics the um sunrise sunset like you i use it morning and night like in the and, and go harder in the winter like massively helps and uh, the guys at red light rising it's all like uh scientifically proven research backed stuff it's it's uh and, and quality um products you can check out their website red light rising um dot co dot uk or dot com i can't remember but red light search, search red light rising but five percent code uh from them the lovely guys there is soc5 gives you five percent off any of their red light products I mean, I'm, I'm a scientist, right? So even if you are a skeptic and you go, I don't know, trust that research, blah, 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 and pick it apart, I promise you at six or seven o'clock in the morning when it's dark outside, you flick that thing on, you are like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. And, and that in itself, for me, is its value, is it's gold. NASA have been researching gold. it since the 60s. There you go, NASA, mm. they're proper scientists. They know. <laughs> they know. And they've been closer to the sun than anyone else. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that, if you go to the moon, is that close to the sun? Potentially that could be further away, couldn't it? Depends where the moon is when you get there, I suppose. 
or where the earth i don't know i'm gonna get i'm gonna, I'm gonna lose myself and, yeah, and we'll almost, i'm in danger, uh, danger make myself look less intelligent at the moment when you see the moon and the sun at the same time yeah freaks me out mm. is it day or night yeah or somewhere in between Right, it was That's one dope. good thing about having a four-year-old, actually. He loves space books. He brings them home from school. I'm learning a lot. We did <laughs> oh, Jupiter last week. Yeah, and he's got, he, last week he came with 100 facts about science. I learned about combustion engines and all sorts. Oh, Never I, too old to learn, Jacko. Hold that, that, that another, that's proper science, Tim. That's proper that's that's engineering. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, we, could do a whole, we could do a whole podcast series on that. Get Jack on. Not, not complaining because it's winter and your hands might get cold when, you pull, when you're holding your pull-up bar. But. <laughs> Right, let's wrap it up. Yeah, and we hope that's been useful. There's some nuggets in there. Just, uh, we, I'd love to know actually. Like, send us uh, some question, uh, send us uh, some DMs or emails or whatever. Just let us know like how you're going to structure you into trading. Yeah. Maybe it'll be useful to commit to a a plan. And I definitely, if you're going to take one thing away from this, have a plan. Structure something. If you are going to be trading at home and you're a bit sort of like, oh, it's hard when it gets into the winter. Don't just succumb to. Um, to just bumbling your way through the next three or four months. Yeah. Have a plan. If you want to get Jack with me, then like let's do it. I'm going to come into spring looking, looking amazing. That's you need, yeah, you need to put, be... a, put a put a hyper trophy sort of program together for all of us over the winter, and we can follow it together. <laughs> yeah. Who wants like a winter a winter bulk a body weight bulk? Uh, there you go, know. Pat and Pendy. That is 100 sell. <laughs> body weight bulk. I'm still trying to work out the exact content though. It doesn't really work for me. I, I kind of just. Yeah, people look at me and go, what are you doing, bulking? Well, I'm trying. No, I think but... you, were, you were looking large and in charge last time. I went and saw you do a treat with your shirt off. I was like, Timbo. Kind of you, Jacko. Give us that, kind of you. Give us that, that uh, body weight bulk program that you've been talking about. Stop <laughs> keeping it for yourself. It all hunches on the lunges. It's all about the lunges, mate. I yes. think it's the... Uh... <laughs> right, we're going to get off That's the end this yeah, time. No, teaser for people. We're going to put that in. Put, if, if you're interested in a body weight bulk from Tim and what that program would look like, let us know because I am one of those people that would be interested <laughs> to know what that is. Um, and then, yeah, as Tim knows, like, let us know what you're what you're doing and what your plans are for that because actually, you might even give us some uh, some inspiration ideas as well that goes full circle on that. Uh, Jack, I'll tell you what your first step of your of your bodyweight bulk program is. Stop doing all that bendy stuff. <laughs> it's no good for your gains. <laughs> Mate, feel it now, but there we talk about feeling good. When I can move my body, I feel good. Yeah, yeah. When I'm yeah, stiff, right. I feel terrible. So that's oh, maybe yeah. get bendy. Get, get bendy ref- and big. Get bendy and big. And be- <laughs> big and bendy. Program. Big and bendy. There you go. I'll pull that one together. It's a hybrid. A hybrid of your, <laughs> your Vulcan. Hyper J3 and Mubilane. Perfect. Perfect. All right. We're going to go until next time. Keep exploring your physical potential through movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed.